In 2018, Naval Postgraduate School's Captain Wayne Hughes with co-author Admiral Robert Geary released the third edition of Captain Hughes's book Fleet Tactics and Naval Operations. All three editions include the Hughes-Salvo equations, and in this episode we will discuss the origins and insights gleaned from this essential tool for the modern naval tactician. Captain Hughes, thank you for joining us again for another discussion on the third edition of Fleet Tactics. Today I want to talk about the salvo equations. What are the salvo equations? I worked them out to be a concise way to describe salvo warfare like when carriers, air wings attack other forces, when uh, torpedo salvos are fired from a formation of destroyers, or in modern warfare when missile ships fire anti-ship cruise missiles at at other ships or even land targets. How do the salvo equations differ from the Lanchester equations? The Lanchester equations were invented by a fellow who thought that they were going to describe air-to-air -air warfare. Uh, they they are, are different in that they, they are continuous fire, like in the age of uh, fighting ships and uh, the battleship when guns fired continuously. But when air-to-air uh, -air combat started, Lanchester thought that, that they would be uh, an opportunity to show that uh, numbers would matter more. Turns out he was wrong. It turns out that uh, the Lanchester Square Law didn't apply because air-to-air -air combat is like a series of duels. Uh, so the Lanchester Linear Law applied much more uh, effectively. However, the, um, currently now the Lanchester equations for ground fire works pretty well because that's continuous fire. Uh, it, it worked in the age of guns, as I said, because when guns were fighting guns, then uh, uh, we could show from historical battles like the Battle of Jutland and the Battle of Heligoland Bight that these uh, were accurate, pretty accurate representations of, of how the battle would go with the single exception that sometimes the, the uh, square law didn't work because uh, when you, and the square law says that when you have put a ship out of action you should ship fire and put everybody out of action and then you can sink them at their leisure. But uh, it turns out that sailors at sea get their blood up, and when they see a ship that's burning, they want to sink the bastard. <laughs> well, be that as it may, then the salvo equations represent when a pulse of power is fired instead of a, a continuous wave of fire, and it turned out to be very versatile and helpful. Why did you develop the salvo equations? It's fun to answer this question and also humbling. <laughs> uh, way back in the late 70s, uh, a very astute anal analyst in uh, the Office of Secretary of Defense named Will O'Neill sent a memo down to the CNO saying that the Lanchester equations demonstrated that numbers were more important than uh, individual ship quality and noted that our Navy was getting smaller in numbers and and bigger in ship quality, and, and we should take a look at this. Well, the CNO sent it down to us in Op 96 because we were the, the, the analysts in, in the organization, and I was outraged. I said, this, this can't be true. And I tried to think of reasons why it couldn't be true and, and uh, didn't really have a satisfactory answer. So when I came out, to the Naval Postgraduate School a few years later and had time to think one of the first things I wanted to do was take a look and see why Will O'Neill was wrong. Well, in the course of doing that, I started looking at aviation uh, carrier battles. I, I observed that when carriers fought carriers, they were likely to take each other out. Uh, as one very astute aviator said before World War II, uh, a carrier battle against carriers is likely to be like two scorpions fighting in a bottle. It's, it's going to be mutual suicide. And so uh, th that meant that what one needed to do was find the enemy and attack him before he could find and attack you. So that was one of the uh, 
significant outcomes. The, the, the salvo-like format of carrier operations uh, demonstrated, and of course that appears in the book later. Also in the book, fleet tactics I'm talking about, uh, I looked at the battles in the Solomon's campaign and, and noticed that in 1942 we kept losing. And the reason was, one was that the Japanese practiced night battles more assiduously than we had, and the second was that they understood that the decisive weapon was going to be a salvo of torpedoes, not uh, a continuous gunfire. And so they, when we used our radar advantage to detect them first and open fire, uh, and then they would uh, wheel, fire torpedoes at us, uh, put a lot of ships out of action, sink a lot of ships, and, and withdraw. And we were losing battles. Most of the battles were, were, were certainly not victories. Uh, then in 1943, there was a pause, and we had time to get our act together. And uh, Commander Arleigh Burke came out and, and uh, studied the battles and, and discovered uh, that we could use our radar advantage. And if we used our torpedoes, then we could sneak up on the enemy and we wouldn't reveal our position with gunfire and we could start winning and lo and behold when we used his tactics we sank a lot of Japanese ships and hardly uh, and lost none of our own. Then of course that demonstrated that that was a, the clue that when missiles are the weapon of choice then small ships are going to be able to take out even more big ships because they can fire a salvo, say, um, say a little ship can fire eight missiles or, or even 16. And uh, the, the format of the equations uh, didn't change much. Uh, it just evolved into what uh, we, we use today. So I had to eat crow. Uh, and I found out Will O'Neill was not only right, but but numbers were even more important than I thought. What other big insights are brought to light by the Salvo equations? Well, I mentioned that numbers are the most important, but mm -hmm. the Salvo equations are even more specific. They say if uh, you have three times as many ships as I do, then each of my ships must have uh, three times the firepower, three times the defensive power, and three times the staying power of your ships as a mathematical construct. But it's also true operationally. Uh, so if, if you shoot at me and put one of my ships out of action, then I lose my offensive power, my defensive power, and, and because the ship will be uh, fall out of formation and the enemy won't shoot at it anymore, the staying power value of the ship is, is also true. Uh, one more thing I'll mention here is that uh, the, sh the equations show that uh, modern combat is unstable. If I don't have very many ships and I don't have very sh many ships that can take a lot of hits, then the, sh the battle can shift from being a total victory to a total defeat in a, a very short space if one side or the other changes its numbers. How confident are you that the Salvo equations are a good representation of missile combat? There are really three answers to this, two yeses and a no. <laughs> uh, one of the yeses is we've done a lot to uh, my students and uh, friends and other faculty members have done a lot to demonstrate that the equ equations really work uh, using uh, historical examples, using uh, mathematical, uh, using complicated simulations, using other formats that, that demonstrate that, uh, yes, they are, are a, a good approximation uh, if, if you know what the characteristics of the actual battle were, then you can uh, prove that the salvo equations will ex post facto uh, have predicted how the battle would have gone. Is there a third reason? I said there was a third reason, which uh, is on the contrary side, um, and, and I illustrate that by saying that uh, 
the, the, the equations are a simplification. Thus, uh, one of my favorite students, Jeff Karras, uh, did a simulation uh, and, and demonstrated. Uh, the simulation was more realistic than the equations were, less realistic than real combat, but they did show what he called the sump effect. Mm. Uh, the ships on the near side of the formation are likely to take more hits than the ships on the far side of the formation. The ships with the biggest radar cross-section are likely to draw the missiles to them and, and take more. Uh, whereas the, the equations say that the distribution of fire will be uh, uniform uh, across the board. Uh, also, the equations are deficient and they don't uh, tell you what the effects of longer range detection and longer range uh, weapons may be. So we have to approximate that by uh, taking the ships with those longer range capabilities and let them fire first and, and, and do an offline examination to, to, to demonstrate. Also, if you get into inshore combat in places like the Baltic or the Persian Gulf or, or the China Sea or the Yellow uh, Sea, th then you have to worry about uh, not lo longer range, but uh, the ability to lurk behind islands. There's something like 13,000 islands in uh, Indonesia and 11,000 islands off the Swedish coast. The Swedish hide in those islands and then they go out and they spring at you from with a, with a surprise attack. Uh, that shows that numbers of missiles and surprise attacks are very possible and that's, that's another variation that you can test with the salvo equations once you understand the, the battlefield and the nature of the battle. You have implied there are different ways to use the salvo equations. Might you list some of those ways to broaden our understanding? For once I want to read my answer because it's, it's pretty complicated. Uh, the, first of all there are four generic answers. Uh, one is that uh, these cl there are clues regarding the nature of modern combat with missiles. As, as, as I said before, the equations show that in all circumstances, numbers are the most important characteristics and a, a force can have, uh, that a force can have when it's fighting uh, with anti-ship cruise missiles. A second generic answer is that it gives you clues about the kinds of warships that are best for blue water and green water combat. For blue water sea, con for, for blue water sea control operations, our sen sensors and weapons must outrange the enemy so that we can attack him before he attacks us because we can't be uh, constantly ready for a first salvo by the enemy. In green water where the ranges are shorter, uh, only small missile ships should be put at risk because short-range surprise attacks are going to be very, very common. A third generic answer is they can be used uh, for quick tactical assessments uh, before a, a modern sea battle. Uh, if our OTC at the Battle of Savo Island had used them, he might have concluded our forces were too spread out and they should have been more concentrated when, when we uh, lost that battle. And finally, uh, an application I have not mentioned before is to check against historians' assessments of, of past battles. Uh, a, a good friend and Canadian named Michael Armstrong uh, refought the battle of the uh, Coral Sea using the Salvo equations to test my conclusions about why the battle came out the way they did, and to my delight, he, the Salvo equations reinforced. The, the accuracy of my assessment. Then beyond the generic side, uh, here's some examples of other student applications uh, or faculty or even uh, tactical analyst applications. Uh, one student, Lieutenant Ray Snell, uh, showed that salvo equations could be used to study battles between missile-armed aircraft bombers and uh, a, a, a carrier battle group uh, very successfully. Another faculty member and good friend, Jeff Klein, reached quantitative conclusions about the value of deception in reducing our losses. 
the aforementioned Jeff Karras, years later, uh, wrote a book uh, or edited a book in which he wrote the last chapter himself. Using the Salvo equations, he showed that if uh, a combatant has some, it carries some unmanned surface vehicles, probably unmanned aerial vehicles too, but he used unmanned surface vehicles, and then launches them at the time of the battle, uh, a, a force that would break even with the enemy or might even lose to the enemy gets a big boost, and he shows quantitatively how valuable those offboard sensors are to act as decoys, deception devices, and, uh, and to carry companion missiles. All of those things, you're right, all of those things uh, show the versatility of the Salvo equation. Well, excellent, Wayne. Thanks for the discussion. And as always, I look forward to our next discussion about the third edition of Fleet Tactics. I look forward to it, too. We'll talk about some famous naval officers. Perfect. Thank you for taking a moment to view a discussion on the origins of the Hughes-Salvo equations with their creator, Captain Wayne Hughes. These thoughts and others are included in the third edition of Fleet Tactics and Naval Operations, co-authored by Captain Hughes and Admiral Robert Guerrier.